Ayan na. Ayan na, mga ka... Meta! Kamusta kayo dyan? May barda gula. Nagpahinga lang tayo ng konti. Ang dami ng mga hot takes at barda gula na nangyari dyan online. Na talagang ibang klase, ibang klase talaga mga kameta. Mga kameta, check natin yan ha. Ito talaga mga... <laughs> Barda Gulan Edition! Yan! Ayan naman, pangit na naman yung ano natin dyan. Earphones natin dyan. Okay, mga... Subscribe naman kayo dyan, mga kameta. Whether nandyan kay sa Facebook, sa YouTube, pakisubscribe. Pag-usapan natin itong mga hot takes. Very hot takes by ating mga politikos. Kasama dyan itong... Iba... Kala ko yung Kalabaw Research Research lang ano... So ito, 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 unahin muna natin ito yung mga... Nako, seryoso yung mga issue na yan, guys, ha? Kaso, so akala ko, ito talaga yung magtatap, no? Itong comment sa kalabaw. Diba? Akala natin, ito yung talaga magdi-next level na top. Eh kanina, meron na namang comment. Ayan, dun naman sa issue ng inflation, meron na naman words of wisdom ang ating senadora. Ito, 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 meron siya. O, ito, ewan ko na, baka, baka fake news yan, ha? Lagot kayo dyan. Ito daw yung sinabi. O, naharap natin online yan, ha? Ito, ito, ito. So, pakiano natin dyan. Pagdating dun sa issue na inflation, ito po daw ang sinabi dun sa Senate hearing on yung hearing sa Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform. Ito po yung sinabi, no? Pag nagdi-discuss rin kami kung paano gagawin, sabi nila i-adjust yung planting season na iwasan yung bagyo para hindi tatamaan yung crop sa bagyo. Pag panahon ng bagyuhan, itanim root crops kasi yung root crops nasa ilalim ng lupa. So tinamaan ng bagyo, hindi siya affected. Matuto tayo kumain ng kamote. Ito, ito, ito. Yan, matuto tayo kumain ng kamote. Ito po yung ano natin ha, guys. Kasi mataas ang inflation natin. Siyempre, mataas ang inflation. Mataas ang... <laughs> ay, mataas ang imports natin ng, um, ng agricultural produce, di ba? O, ito, ito, seryoso na ito. So, dapat talagang solution daw dyan. Yung isa pang pwede natin gawin dyan is... Let's learn to eat kamote. Ayan. Kami yung mga tagabagi dyan, yung mga kabataan namin, yung mga kinikaya namin, kamote. Diba? Yun naman. So, talaga may words of wisdom naman. Nahala niyo naman, of course, in the past, may words of wisdom din si ma'am. Doon naman dun sa issue ng research sa, ano, hindi trabaho ng karabaw center ang mag-feed ng milk. Ang trabaho mo, mag-produce ka ng mga karabaw at gumawa ka ng mga processes and uh, ng karabaw para yan ang bili ng yan so may mga words of wisdom talaga si ma'am sa so, mga hot takes na pag-usapan natin yan so kamote ba ang sagot sa ating ano <clears throat> agricultural problems hindi may mahina na po ko eh yung hindi lang yung karabaw center meron niya ito tata lawas natin yan kasi talaga maraming words of wisdom ang ating senator especially pagdating sa Wait lang ah, Ito, 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 ito. Ito yung pinaka-favorite ko sa kanya mga words of wisdom. Nasaan ka na? Ayan, ayan. Ito, ito. Tirak mo atin ulit yan. Ang pakamata. Tama na yan. Baliw na baliw kayo sa research. Aanin nyo ba yung research? Ako, matalino akong tao, pero hindi ko maintindihan yung research nyo, lalo na yung farmer. Gusto ba ng farmer yung research? <laughs> yan, tama yan, tama yan. Maganda yan, maganda yan. Nasaan na yan? So yun, guys, marami tayong mga hot takes dito. The truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth oh in this God, proceeding, so help you, God. Madam Chair, they are now all under oath. We have attorney castrationes at the end of the day. Bakit may background music tayo dyan? Anong gagawin niya ngayon? Eh, sinabi niya, when the time... Bakit tayo dyan? Hindi natin alam ano yung nangyari dyan. Okay, okay, ito, 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 mga ka, ano. 
Basta matuto daw tayo mga kamote. Yun po ang ano. Pwede natin sagot dyan sa agricultural self-sufficiency. No? May mga hot takes tayo dyan. In the meantime, yung presidential son natin, of course, meron din siyang hot take dito. Ito talaga eh. Yung mga, ito yung mga favorite ko talaga eh. Talagang daming words of wisdom talaga sa ano ah. Sa agricultural sector. Eh syempre guys, ito yung hawak din ni Paolo Marcos. Diba? So, tingnan natin ano yung mga advice kay Paolo Marcos na pwedeng ano, i-implement habang siya po ay Secretary of Agriculture at wala pa tayong Agriculture Secretary na na permanente, permanente. Alright, huwag daw masyadong mag-research sir dyan. Matuto tayo mag kamote. Alright, wait lang ha. Di pa yata tayo lunch kaya kulang yung ano natin. Ito, ito. Ayan, meron na naman tayo words of wisdom naman from the presidential son naman pagdating dito sa... Yan, yun ang heart drop natin, presidential son, London School of Economics, vlogger, batch dad's vlogger, mga gina. Okay, ito po yung ano, ito po yung analysis po ng ating presidential son dito sa issue ng inflation. Ba- again ha, base sa mga reports na kita natin, post natin sa baba para makita nyo naman. Expected naman daw yung inflation na yan. Unwelcome development, but it's expected given the nu- numerous supply issues that happen. Even if we have reached a high, I think, a high inflation. I think since December 2018 was the last time na nakarating tayo sa ganong kataas na inflation. Wait lang. Is this updated? Because the inflation we have is actually, a, yeah, is, this is November 4, tama. Actually, our inflation, guys, uh, factually correct, dapat tayo 14-year high. So it's not the highest since December 2018. Lampas na tayo sa 7%. Sa, mid, sa upper 7% na tayo, papunta na tayo sa 8% and double digit. Nakating so yan, medyo may correction tayo dyan. It's something that's being experienced with the whole world. It's really a global phenomenon. So with that, I guess we just have to keep on going and hope that this global phenomenon would work out for all. So ito naman yung dito sa hot tech again. First of all, it's a 14-year high. Basta sa nakita natin numbers, alright? Pakita natin dyan, inflation Philippines, 14 year high. So obviously, pag may minus mo 22 sa 14, hindi lalabas ang 2018, di ba? Common sense lang yan, di ba? Ayan tayo dyan. Research. Research tayo dyan. Ayan, ito, 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 ito. pakita natin dyan. 14 year high. Oh, ito mga favorite newspaper nyo na lang kaya. Huwag tayo dyan sa mga, kunyar, mga dilawan daw na newspaper. Doon tayo sa mga newspaper na ano, gusto si tatay. Ito na lang. O yan, no? Guys, so first of all, ito kung correct to November 4, meron na tayong factual correction dito. If talagang November 4, kasi hindi siya 2018, it's a 14 year high. So, babalik tayo sa panahon ni mga Tita Arroyo pa. Okay? Hindi tatay, tita arroyo level pa. Alright. So, it's a 14-year high. See? It's a 14-year high. So, obviously, minus nyo 22 sa 14, babalik na tayo sa late 2000s. Hindi 2018, but more like 2008-2009. Diba? So, yun. yun first of all, lahat makita natin. So, some correction there is very important. We need to be on top of the data. Again, ah. Uh, Assuming ito po ay... So, again, it's a 14-year high. Hindi siya 4-year high. It's a 14-year high. Okay? So, that's one fact we have to get correct. Hindi December 18, mga 2008 pa yan. 2008, 2009 pa yan. Okay, so that's one thing we have to keep in mind. The other thing, guys, na sinasabi ko dito is... Yes, there's a global factor to it. But the inflation picture is very diverse across different countries. So the diversity, guys, is a reflection of different levels of vulnerability of different countries. E dahil dito sa Pilipinas, napakahina yung agricultural sector natin, right? Uh, napakataas yung import levels natin, napakahina yung exports natin compared sa imports natin. Mga structural problems yan, no? So hindi naman kasalanan ni Marcos lahat yan. 
At the same time, sabi din natin, may mga gawa din ng gobyerno on multiple fronts. For instance, it can provide targeted subsidies para tulungan yung supply ng agriculture dun sa mga indigent communities. Pero magkaroon ng, uh, for instance, you can have release of emergency reserves to bring down the price of certain agricultural goods. Diba? Kung meron reserves ang government, kung there's a rise, sa NFA rise, diba? ginagawa yan, for instance, to help yung mga ating kababayan kung may problema tayo sa rice. Meron din tayong pwedeng gawin ng monetary policies, di ba? Uh, sabi natin, yung pwedeng gawin ng central bank, itaas yung interest rates pa, iba ba yung overall demand to push down also the prices. Ginagawa ng US Federal Reserve yan, ginagawa ng BSP yan. Some would say dapat more aggressive pa gagawin. Although BSP dun sa statement niya, na-discuss natin last week, sinabi naman niya, uh, hindi, uh, we cannot do everything. Others could also do their part and should do their part. Obviously, referring to the Department of Agriculture and other sector. Pero sabi naman ni Senator, magkakamoto na lang tayo, siguro yun yung isang sagot, diba? And then, there's so many other things to also do, no? Uh, we could also have strategic deals with some of our counterparts, whether it's Vietnam, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's some of the countries which can provide us grain or rice or some of the agriculture and basic goods at the best possible prices. So G2G deals, government-to-government deals, no? Yun din natin gamit. So there's a full range of issues that governments can do in order to deal with an inflationary spike. Pero sabi ko parati guys, ang maha, talagang malaki na itong problema ng inflation dahil nga marami sa ating mga kababayan, their real wages are not increasing. So if the real wages of people is increasing, if the real wages of the people is increasing, then guys, even if mataas inflation, mas tumaas pa yung wages mo so you can beat the inflation. Yun talagang dapat goal natin. Pataasin talagang yung productivity at saka yung real wages ng ating mga kababayan, especially yung mga sa lower rungs of the socioeconomic class, para we can better deal with an inflation situation. As I said, in places like Turkey, inflation is at 60-70%, right? Insane. Some would say 120%. But the wages have been also increasing. But the prices of uh, property have been increasing, and they have a huge middle class that il- although their real wages kind of depressed, their, their net worth increased significantly, right? And the depression in real wages was not as high uh, because the wages, the nominal wage was increasing enough to somehow keep up with the inflation rate. That's why even if 60-70%, hindi ganong kasakit. Pilipina, 6-7% parang ang sakit na. Diba? You get what I'm saying? I'm not justifying what's happening in Turkey. I'm just saying everything has to be seen within a bigger picture. Kaya hindi pwede idadaan sa hot take lang yan. Hindi idadaan sa isang paragraph explanation. You have to have a much more comprehensive understanding and explanation of, of a particular phenomenon katulad na to. Alright? But at the same time, of course, huwag tayo maging sensitive na sabihin natin hindi issue yung inflation. Malaking issue talaga yung inflation. Pero isang dahilan na malaking issue yung inflation is dahil napakababa yung sahod at yung productivity levels natin. No? So if the real wages can catch up, everything can move in the right direction. Now, moving to a much more serious issue, uh, Senate President Zubiri also no, had a kind of a, I don't want to say peroration, but had a, may pagka-hot take din siya dito sa report from the United Nations questioning itong situation natin pagdating sa sa human rights issues, no? So, quite defensive yung kanyang response. Uh, tingnan natin na, ah, makameta, one second, ilalabas ko lang to. Pakinggan muna natin si Senator Zubiri before we make judgments or make discussions about this. Interestingly, si Senator Zubiri, may sinabi naman siya na ukul sa China, right? And I'm not sure the Chinese would like. No, so last time ito yung issue na claim niya that the Chinese ambassador said or the translator of the Chinese ambassador said na imano yung mag English yung Chinese ambassador ba? Na baka mag blacklist tayo dito tayo sa pogo na pogo issue niya. Tapos nag walk back yung Chinese embassy eh nagkaroon na hit one. This time naman may sinabi na naman ulit si Mick Zubiri may, sa China. But of course, the primary issue was human rights and journalism. And related din ito dun sa issue na diniscuss natin kahapon mga kameta. Pakinggan natin ng sandali ito. Bakit ganun? Ito, ito, ito. Narinig nyo? Narinig nyo mga kameta? Ay, ay, ay. Nagsabay-sabay ato yung iba.
Narinig nyo ba? Wait lang ha. Pati hindi na wala pa rin yung research research na yan. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Kasi andun pa rin yung isa eh. Ay, nis. Wait lang ha. Paano kay labas yung isa? <laughs> Ayan na naman tayo eh. Yung ano kasi natin kay ma'am, ano, Cynthia. Andun pa rin siya sa background, but I don't know where it is. Hindi ko naman siya nakikita dito. Saan siya napunta? Research, research. Kasi kaya ng research, research. Tuloy ano nangyari dito. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ito, 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 ito. Ayan. Okay, okay. Ito, ayusin natin na. So, ito guys, ah, so, ang nangyari dito is parang sinasabi ng una-una, yung statement niya sa China ay very interesting. Nasasabi niya kung talaga, kung totoo kang journalist, kukulong, makukulong ka kaagad sa China, which is an interesting thing considering, you know, di ba, beshi-beshi ni tatay yung China na yan. Iba na naman. Iba na naman. Matuto na naman tayo magganta ni mga kamote dyan, mga kameta. Hindi, 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 hindi. Naka second strike na yan <laughs> nung last time naman doon sa issue ng ano ng uh, naalala niyo yung yung sinabi ni Zubiri doon sa issue ng China na uh, bina blacklist tayo din na nine. Ngayon naman sinabi kung sa China wala talagang freedom of pre- free free press which by the way is correct ah uh, honest siya. I I like that. Yung point naman ah, ah, kasi doon sa human rights issue that I do not agree because A report came out that shows the Philippines is actually among the 10 worst countries on earth. So it's not like we're just like another ordinary country. No, no, no. We're top 10 in the world, guys. Ah. Top 10 in the world. Pagdating dito sa violence against journalists. No? So ilabas natin yung report na yan. Kasi yun, yun yung nirespond ni uh, Senate President Zubiri. So we have to be very clear about these facts, guys. It's very, very important. No, It's very, very important. So, ito ah. Tapos ko yung tweet ni parang Jail Cornelio who, who kindly shared it. No, no, ito, ito, ito. Ito guys ah. Basahin natin. Hindi ito. Kasi ito ang problema ko. Bine-blame pa yung media for exposing facts. Pansin sa akin. Huwag na natin pansin yan para hindi mag issue yan. Eh, eh, that's not how it works. You have to deal with the issue because it's a real issue. Right? Uh, to just, you know, shove it below, you know, the carpet. It doesn't work that way. So, ito guys, uh, ito yung report na long. So, meron tayo guys, ito yung situation natin. That of course, in, in light of Kapersi's uh, assassination, it's something that, that it's very palpable, no? Very, very palpable. So, ito, yung Filipinas po ay rank 7 worst country on earth, no? Pagdating sa murder of journalists. 
base sa report ng Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ. Uh, this is the 15th year, no? So, almost dalawang dekada na, guys, ng Pilipinas po ay talagang nasa problematic location pagdating sa list na yan. And tignan mo yung mga countries na kasabay ng Pilipinas. Somalia, gitna ng giyera. Syria, gitna ng giyera. South Sudan, giyera. Afghanistan, Iraq, Myanmar, Pakistan, India, Mexico, Brazil. Alright? So, kitang-kita talaga in a very big problem yan. According dun sa CPJ 2022 Global Impunity Index, the Philippines tallied 14 unsolved journalist murders in the last decade and it's in, in the same ranking this year as the last year. No? So sabi ni CPJ, the election of President Marcos Jr. brought hope of a shift away from outgoing President Duterte's campaign of intimidation and harassment of the press. But he noted that murders of Mabasa and another journalist, Mr. Blanco, raised fears that the culture of violence and impunity will endure. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, let's support President Marcos when it comes to getting to the bottom bottom, bottom of the issue here. No? Yung, yung, yung assassination in Kapersi. And in a way, we should welcome the fact that high-level officials, including the DLG Secretary and Justice Secretary, all of them are kind of on top of this. So sabi ni President Marcos, under my lead, we will support and protect the rights of the media as they efficiently perform their duty. Sabi ng Marcos administration, they're strongly committed to the protection and safety of members of the media in the country. Nevertheless, ayon sa CPJ, the vast majority of killers of journalists continue to get away with murder. Uh, in nearly 80% of 263 cases of journalists murdered in for, uh, sa Pilipinas related to their work for exposing abuses by those in power or criminal groups, uh, the, partic- the perpetrators have faced no punishment whatsoever. So malaking issue, guys, malaking issue etong impunity, etong impunity uh, ng mga tao na nag-engage in violence against those uh, doing their job as as journalists and working in the press and broadcasting uh, sector. no. In a statement on Thursday, nag-respond din ang Department of Justice spokesperson Miko uh, Clavano. Ayon sa kanya, the index will not stop the new administration from investigating and prosecuting work-related killings and harassment of journalists. We understand the importance of good journalism and we will take concrete steps in protecting those that simply want to keep the government and its officials in check. It is right, we must respect and preserve. Uh, on its part, ang National Union Journalists of the Philippines and UJP naman uh, also underscored the fact that yung report na yan adds to making journalism a dangerous, uh, underscores the fact that journalism is a dangerous profession, uh, profession in the Philippines in the social media post ang sabi nila. The report is even more timely as the government investigation of the killing of broadcaster Percy Labit continues amid twists and complications. While we w- welcome initiatives by the government to engage with journalists and to look into their safety and security, NUJP holds that the resolution of cases of attacks against our colleagues as well as the assurance that threats against us will be taken seriously are among the best ways to ensure that we can report without fear of reprisal. We hope that the CPJ findings are not dismissed as propaganda will instead prompt the government to redouble efforts to solve the cases. I'm, uh, let me just say that in fairness naman sa, in fairness naman sa Marcos administration, I don't think they took a dismissive stand towards it. As we can see from the statement of the spokesperson of the Department of Justice, as you can see in the statement of President Marcos earlier, you know, President Marcos earlier, they are recognizing that there's a problem and they're recognizing the need to do something about this. Kaya medyo na uyildon na ako, now we have this kind of statement whereby parang the onus is being placed on the media. So yung appeal ng Senate President natin, I appeal to the media na tulungan nyo naman kami mapagandahin ang imahe ng Pilipinas. My point is that if gusto natin papagandahin yung imahe ng Pilipinas, then, then let's get to the bottom of the problem. Let's not deny the problem. Let's not be an ostrich, you know, uh, you know, uh, burying our, our head into the sun in order not to see the problem. Katulad nung Percy Lap, uh, nung casing uh, ka Percy Lapid, nahuli na nga yung bumarel at mahuli na nga yung mastermind tumulong namin. Tumulong naman kayong i-announce yan sa buong mundo. Okay. So, ang concern naman is that the moves in the right direction are not being emphasized enough. But ang point ko naman, the CPJ is not looking at one case or two case. The CPJ is looking at more than 200 cases, no? Uh, and it's, it's it's saying that out of those hundreds of cases, uh, 263 cases, 80%, we have a situation of impunity. So, it's not a case or one case or two. Kaya nga, medyo may concern ako dito sa hot take na yan. And in fairness to the Marcos administration and DOJ, 
the uh, Department of Justice, they had statements that at least are reassuring on the surface. Now let's see the, how the execution is going to go. And hopefully the investigations will really bring justice as far as Capersi's case is concerned. All right. I'll keep it here, guys. Alam ko, lunchtime na yan. Habol nating lunchtime. Medyo low bat tayo. Trabaho pa tayo. Magme-meta pa tayo, mamaya, God willing. Ang ang ihabol ko lang, mga kameta, is ito. Ihabol ko lang. Itong announce. Itong confirmation na magkakaroon ng sequel ang Made in Malacanang. All right? So, may confirmation na tayo from no less than, I think, a senator, right? So, balikan natin yung issue na yan. So, pag-usapan natin si Direct Daryl, ano, pag-usapan din natin Made in Malacanang. Maraming, malaming talagang kailangan pag-usapan yan. Yun lang, guys, ha. Minsan, kailangan talaga i- ano, ha, i-interrogate itong mga hot takes ng mga politikos. Otherwise, ayan, matuto na lang tayo mag... Kamote. All right. Have a good day, guys. Thank you so much. Malay salamat sa mga bigay ng comments, suggestions, sa mga nagbigay ng ng stars and support. I really appreciate that. Have a good day. Maga pang araw. Balikan ko kaya. I know out of nowhere bigla itong ano natin, etong meta natin. Pero sabi ko talagang patulan natin to, patulan nato, patulan nato. All right. Thank you very much, guys. God bless. Talk to you soon.